now that it's been confirmed that Garp's Fist is rated G for Galaxy, we've gotten a taste of the true force that is the hero of the Marines. And it is spicy. And this gives rise to a very fun, long lingering question. What if Sengoku didn't stop Garp at Marineford? What would have happened if Garp wasn't prevented from going after Aka Inu during Marineford War? How much damage would he have done to the Marine Admiral? Would his anger coated fist have been actually enough to kill Aka Inu like he said he would have to Sengoku? Would he have even go so far as to team up with the legendary pirate Whitebeard to achieve this? And what would be the aftermath of such an event? Well, keep watching because we're going to discuss how Garp betraying his duty to the Marines would have completely changed the entire course of One Piece and in completely unthinkable ways. From the structure and leadership of the Marines to the existence of Sword, the fate of key characters like Smoker and Kobe, and even Yamato's chances as the next confirmed straw hat. All because what if Sengoku didn't stop Garp at Marineford? First things first, in order for this hypothetical to have any real significance, we're relying on Garp being actually able to battle Aka Inu and leave some impact in a way substantive enough to make some real difference to the overall story. And now I would imagine most of you are convinced with the recent showing of his strength that he most definitely would be. But in case there are some non-believers, let's go through this question real quick. Would Garp actually have been strong enough to damage Aka Inu? Aka Inu obviously outranks Garp as an admiral, but we all know by now that this is simply by choice. And Garp's choice. Garp has rejected multiple offers to become an admiral, choosing to stay in his position as vice admiral because he doesn't want to fall under the direct authority of the Celestial Dragons. So in this case, ranks don't mean anything. But how strong was Garp actually during the events of the Marineford War? Well, if you're not already convinced after seeing the power that the Galaxy Punch packed, let's take a look at his resume, shall we? From what we know of his legendary history as a Marine, Garp may very well be the strongest of the Navy. At his prime, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Goldie Roger, the former Pirate King, and together they were enough to take down not only Rock's D Zebek, but the incredibly overpowered Rock's Pirates, a crew consisting of some of the most legendary strongest pirates in the series, including Whitebeard, Kaido, and Big Mom. If that's not enough, take Don Chinjiao's word for it. Garp was considered the devil to all pirates, despite having a bounty of 542 million million berries at the time, and a headbutt strong enough to split a continent, Garp defeated Qin Zhao, easily denting his head in the process with just one punch. In his training to fight Qin Zhao, Garp crushed not one, not two, not three, or even seven for that matter, but eight damn mountains. How does a man flatten eight mountains? And with just his fists, no devil fruits? Haki. And Garp has sure mastered Haki. Now some of you may say a lot of this is about Garp in his prime. So how do we actually gauge his strength during the war at Marineford as an old man? Well... Grandpa's got moves. We saw this clearly even back then with how swiftly he took care of Marco. Marco only had brief clashes with the three admirals, but he never seemed to be in any real trouble with them. But Garp was able to send him away, ensure a clear difference in strength between them, with again, a single punch. And that was just a standard punch, mind you. More recently, we saw the effects of his galaxy punch, his conqueror's haki alone being strong enough to obliterate a big part of Hachinosu. And arguably, Garp is most likely to have been even even stronger two years ago during the Marineford War than he is in the current storyline. Because in the opposite way to younger characters like Luffy who only get stronger as they reach their peak, the older Garp gets, the weaker he likely gets. In fact, the most fitting comparison might be to say that Garp during Marineford was comparable to none other than the other old timer participating in the war, the legendary Whitebeard. After all, the two were each the greatest rival of Goldie Roger. Whitebeard as Roger's pirate rival and Garp as the Marine. In fact, it's probably even fair to say that Garp was in even better shape than Whitebeard at this time, given that he was still an active Marine during the time of the war, whereas Whitebeard was ill and perhaps even arguably semi-retired by this point. There's gotta be a reason why, for all his cheeky insubordination, the world government dare not get rid of Garp. And that's because despite his age, he's still an invaluable asset to the Marines. So I think that's enough to establish that, yeah, anyone Garp directs his anger at is 
is in serious trouble. But exactly how much trouble? Well, for starters, let's set the scene. Garp is at his peak in terms of anger and emotions. Remember, at this point, Aka Inu had already killed Ace. And for us to hypothesize on what if Sengoku didn't stop Garp, this is to actually ask, what if Sengoku wasn't strong enough to hold down Garp? Because there is no way that Sengoku, the fleet admiral, the absolute head of the marines, would have willingly let Garp run loose. If Garp wasn't stopped at Marineford, that means he wasn't able to be stopped at Marineford. Whether Sengoku wasn't fast enough or strong enough, Garp broke through Sengoku. And Sengoku is no small fry either. So for Garp to have been able to do that, that means he's reached an emotional rage so strong that it defies the standards of normal strength and blinds him from rational thinking. So if Sengoku wasn't able to stop Garp at Marineford, Garp would have absolutely destroyed Akainu. I mean, put it this way, we've seen the strength behind his fist of love. So just imagine what his fist full of hate is packing. Although Akainu's a Logia user, we know Haki is still able to bypass Logia properties, and we've already established that Garp is a Haki master. He's also extremely fast, as we witnessed in the post Aeneas lobby arc, so getting to Akainu and bypassing his Logia properties faster than Akainu can change form should be of no issue. And if Akainu displayed fear when Whitebeard appeared behind him, Whitebeard, who by this point was already sick even before the war, but also had sustained considerable damage during the battle. Imagine what would happen with Garp, who barely had a scratch on him, standing over Aka Inu as well. The way that I see it playing out, Garp would have sent Aka Inu flying with his fist. And Whitebeard, who was just as angry at the Admiral, probably would have been there to deal similar damage wherever he landed. Seriously, I picture Garp and Whitebeard just punching Aka Inu back and forth like a ping pong ball. In effect, Garp and Whitebeard would be ultimately teaming up, even if for the briefest moment, and even if it wasn't intentional. Both men hell-bent to avenge Ace, who in their own ways is their adopted son. If Garp is in a blind rage, Whitebeard is razor-sharp focus. Akainu just killed one of his treasures, his son, and is now threatening Luffy, knowing his son's last wish is to keep his brother safe. Now where does this go? If the fight that was only between Whitebeard and Akainu in the story now also includes Garp, I think it's unlikely that Akainu would have had the strength or stamina to blow off Whitebeard's face. In fact, for Akainu himself, he would be pretty damn close to death. Definitely passed out, taken to an inch of his life, but before anyone can finish him off for good, Blackbeard appears. And I think this will have the same effect as it did in the story. The whole battle shifts. It's the wake-up call that Garp needed to bring him out of his emotional blindness, and as he comes to his senses, Garp realizes the traitorous act he's just committed to his duty as a marine. And although he doesn't want to help the pirate's chances at war, he also comes to the conclusion that he's no longer fit to carry out his duty as a marine and therefore just stops fighting, just standing still in the middle of the battlefield. Meanwhile, Whitebeard's attention would be diverted to the treacherous Blackbeard, his former son and the man responsible for Ace being at the hands of the marines in the first place. So the fight between Whitebeard and Blackbeard still would have happened and Whitebeard would have still died given his illness and just how many injuries he'd sustained even without that last one from Akainu. But Akainu, now unconscious, wouldn't have been there to cause so much trouble for the Whitebeard pirates trying to escape with Luffy, and this also means that Akainu wasn't able to pursue Jinbei escaping with Luffy, meaning he never dealt that magma punch that hit Luffy through Jinbei. And what that means is that Luffy would no longer have that iconic scar on his chest. It also means that Law wasn't needed to perform surgery on Luffy, but I still think that Luffy would have ended up in Amazon Lily, and Luffy's story arc would have continued in the way that it did in the series, just minus that iconic Scar. In the war front, Akainu wouldn't have attacked Kobe because he's still unconscious, but Shanks would have still arrived and supported Kobe's pacifist cries, putting an end to the war. Post Marineford, Luffy's story will continue the way that it did, going to Amazon Lily, grieving and recuperating, only to gloriously return to the plaza and ring the bell 16 times, heralding the new era. However, when it comes to Garp, the question of what to do with Garp would be a huge dilemma that would cause some great political divide within the Marines. Those who view Garp as a disgrace and wish to lock him up for his 
insubordination, while others are still loyal to the legendary Marine. Ultimately, I think Garp himself would accept a very harsh punishment, even to the extent of being locked up in Impel Down. This would be his way of owning up to his actions. After all, he's a man with honor and great pride and integrity who respects the institution of the Navy. His actions against Akainu were purely personal, and it would be Garp's second biggest regret that he besmirched the Navy by attacking Akainu. His biggest regret still being the fact that he sat by and didn't help Ace before it was too late. But I think Garp himself would chose to go to prison to show respect to the Marines and maintain a sense of justice. However, this would cause a huge dropout rate within the Navy because Garp is truly a beloved man within the ranks. A hero to many Marines, if Garp went to jail, I'm certain there's a lot of men who would have left the Navy in protest. And this would heavily reduce the manpower of the Marines. But this would go on to have even bigger implications for the Navy when it comes to assigning the next fleet admiral. Sengoku would have still chosen to step down as he did in the real story, and even more so now that his close friend is in prison, which I'm sure causes him some personal pain, no matter how much he feigns annoyance at his old friend. But also, similar to Garb, stepping down would be Sengoku's way of accepting responsibility for failing to pin down Garb and stopping his rampage on Akainu as he should have. So the fleet admiral position would again open up, with the candidate still being Akainu, who is backed up by the higher-ups, and Aokiji, who is recommended by Sengoku. Except this time, the battle would be an entirely different story. For one, Aokiji would still have the widespread support of his subordinates, but this would now increase in numbers with the addition of Garp supporters. And since we've established that many of Garp's Marine supporters would leave their duty in protest, these resigned Marines will now live among citizens and spread the good word on why Aokiji would be best suited to be the next fleet admiral, therefore gaining him public support as well. And in terms of the actual duel itself, Given that Aokiji isn't necessarily a dirty fighter, and this is still a battle occurring within the sanctions of the Marines, I think Akainu would have been given time to recuperate and recover from his injuries sustained during the war. But let's be honest, the man was attacked by both an enraged Garp and Whitebeard. There is no way that he walked out of the Marineford War without some permanent damage. Regardless of how much time passed between Marineford and the battle for the fleet admiral position, physically, Akainu just wouldn't be in the same shape as he was in the real story. And in addition to that, there is now even greater motivation for Aokiji to win this battle, having his mentor in mind, as well as the hope placed upon him by the general public and his supporters in the Marines. In terms of allegiances and ideals even within the Navy, we know by now that Aokiji seems to lean closer to Garp than to Akainu. In fact, Aokiji is repulsed by Akainu and has been ever since the Ohara incident when he witnessed Akainu's unnecessary cruelty in the name of justice. And now that Garp, someone Aokiji personally looked up to, is in prison, Aokiji knows that it's even more important that the Marines don't just become a factory that churns out mini Akainus, because in the real story, at least Garp stayed on in semi-retirement to still train new Marines, assuring the likes of Aokiji that Garp's ideals and values were still being imparted to the Navy. But with Garp gone, the risk of the fate of the Navy is too great. So coupled with Akainu's diminished physical state and Aokiji's deepened motivation, Aokiji wins the battle at Punk Hazard and therefore becomes the next fleet admiral. As for Akainu, I don't think that he leaves the Marines just because Aokiji won. At the end of the day, Akainu's beliefs are absolute justice, and I don't think his ideals allow him to see that he makes an impact in the world outside of the Marines in the same way that Aokiji described during his conversation with Smoker after leaving the Navy. Speaking of which, if Aokiji became fleet admiral, this means that he never would have left the Marines and therefore would not have become the wayward traveling cyclist, meaning that he wouldn't have been there at Punk Hazard to save Smoker from the hands of Doflamingo, because it was, after all, a wandering Aokiji who stopped Doflamingo from killing his friend. But with no Aokiji, goodbye Smoker. This also means that Aokiji wouldn't have joined Blackbeard's crew, and who knows what sort of ramifications that would have had. For example, it's speculated that it was Aokiji who tipped off the revolutionaries that Blackbeard was on his way to their base, and that's how they escaped. Had Aokiji not been a double agent spy, on Blackbeard's crew, the revolutionaries may have also been rendered to a very depleted state. It's also possible that Pudding wouldn't have been captured as we saw in the German Double Six cover stories, although I think it's more likely that they would have sent someone along with Van Auger. And with Big Mom's strongest child still in his weakened state after his battle with Luffy, that storyline still likely to have played out the same way. Something radically different, however, is what would have happened with Sword. This one's difficult to say for certain because we don't know the extent of who is working in Sword or how long they've been in operation.
cooperation. But for example, if Sword is a new group that was established during the time skip, especially with Aokiji leaving or Garp retiring, then it's entirely possible that Sword may have never been founded had Garp gone to jail and Aokiji become fleet admiral. This would also mean that Drake never went undercover in Kaido's crew, and that would similarly have larger consequences such as Law never being freed from prison before the raid. And without Law, the attack on Onigashima would have gone entirely differently without his Devil Fruit abilities. But because this one relies on assumptions about Sword, let's go back and stick to some certainties. If Aokiji becomes Fleet Admiral and Aka Inu doesn't leave the Marines, that means only one Admiral position would become free and not two like it did in the story. And in this case, there is no way that Aokiji would choose a man like Ryokugu to represent the Marines. And if Ryokugu doesn't exist, that means he also doesn't show up at the end of Wano. Which means that Momonosuke and the Scabbards don't struggle against the big bad threat that opened Yamato's eyes as to the dangers that Wano was still in even with Kaido gone. And this means Yamato had no reason to stay behind at Wano. Yamato would come aboard the Sunny and join the Straw Hats in their adventure like they had planned to all along. So Luffy gets the new Nakama at Wano after all. And if all of this isn't crazy enough yet, Garp being in prison post Marine Fed means that when Kobe was captured by Blackbeard and struggling to escape Hachinosu, Garp is not there to save him. In fact, no one's there to save him. Because until Garp showed up and declared that he was rescuing Kobe, Helmeppo and Hibari were alone in their cause to free their comrade. So not only does this mean that Kobe would probably be captured again by either Blackbeard's crew or the other pirates after the bounty on his head, it also means we never would have witnessed the glory that is Galaxy Impact and the marine hero in all his might. Meaning that personally, I wouldn't have had the inspiration to make this video and take you all along on this journey with me. So basically, asking what if Sengoku didn't stop Garp at Marineford results in us never asking what if Sengoku didn't stop Garp at Marineford? And now that is truly wild. But why don't you let me know what you think? Do you think these are possible scenarios? What do you think would have happened? And where do you think we would be now in the story if only Sengoku didn't stop Garp at Marineford?